our journey begins with Silveira, the man behind one of the most famous high school houses at St. Albans. The house that's tinted in yellow like the gold that it is. Father Gonzalo de Silveira, a Jesuit priest from Portugal, had his main objective as to turn everyone into a Christian. A man who, if he set his mind on something, he would definitely do it and ensure it was completed. He thought of starting on his journey on a ship that would take him many days to arrive in Mozambique. He spent many months on the way, but his heart was on it and he could not stop until he arrived to a Christian. Having heard about the great king, the Wenemu Tapa, he realized that this would be easier done by starting with the king, starting at the top. He thus arrived in Mozambique on 4 February 1516. In that same year, on the 11th of March, he went to Sofala. He left Mozambique Sofala on 18 September 1860, headed to the Mwenemu Palace. His route included the Zambezi River. He made a stopover at Sena. He then travelled from Sena to Tete. He used Luenya, which is now known as Ruya River, as his route, until he rendezvoused at Manzou, which is now known as Masowe River. He used this route until he reached Luanze in Mashonaland East. Luanze is a place in Mashonaland East Zimbabwe which used to be a big place that used to stay a Mwenemutapa general. It had its own ruins which were only discovered recently buried. This is also the place that had the first Zimbabwean church started by the Franciscan priest way, way back. He then went north to present-day centenary in Mashonaland Central. Here he went near Musengezi River where the king's palace was. He arrived on the 24th of December 1560. He had to wait before seeing the king, the Manemu Tapa. All protocols had to be observed, first things first. The wait was not that much long. It was only a few hours, a few days. Then he had to meet the king. <laughs> He was allowed to see the king, Chisamaru Negomo, on 26 December 1860. The Menemu Chisamaru Negomo was a short but very strong man who could make one's mind wander around to equate him to a calf of an elephant. He broke no nonsense. And he was so feared throughout the kingdom. For some months, the king and the priest were the best of friends. They could be seen trading religion stories, geographical stories, and cultures. Just the two of them at their usual place, 
they die the meeting place. Diplomatically, the priest managed to lure the king to his religion, bit by bit, until the king, serenade and hypnotized by the priest's seductive religion through such meetings, was only ready to receive the priest's main product, Jesus, and throw away his Mizimu the medium spirits in return. Within weeks, he converted the Mwene Mutapa, the king, and his mother to Christianity and baptized them using holy water. The king was renamed Don Sebastião and his mother Donna Maria. He also baptized a lot of people in this kingdom. The shepherd Gonzalo da Silveira had many sheep, many people following him within a few months. But as his message spread, so did hatred against him, especially from people who were friends of the Wenemutapa before who were now feeling left out. Having grown up with his local religion in Africa and given a dose of Islam through the Arab traders and now a Christian allegedly born again, this concussion of religions was a perfect recipe for an enigma and the Mwenemutapa was the victim. People were wondering how could waters make someone be born anew? He would be asked by many people. Hmm. This water hmm. was hmm. the Mutakati's way, the sorcerer's way of fixing him. So he had. Holy and water sounded like an oxymoron. There must be a catch in this. And with that scenario, it was obvious that something was called a gift. As the king chewed on the accusations that Silveira was a Muroi, a sorcerer, the Wenemutapa Chisama ordered that Da Silveira's life be terminated. Gonzala Da Silveira was murdered in, in the heat of the night on the 15th of March, 1561. It was alleged that he was strangled to death in his heart by Mwenemutapa's generals and then thrown to Musengezi River where crocodiles infested and thus might have feasted on his bloodied corpse. But that was only the beginning. Years later, the Jesuits, like a bad habit, would soon return in the centenary area to complete what Gonzalo da Silveira had started, the mission. This time, their mission was going to be a place just above the Mavuradona mountain range, the mission, St. Albert's Mission. Oh, <laughs>